Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 3rd of March. India allows hospitals to give COVID-19 vaccine 24-7 at their convenience, says Health Minister. Activist blames Pakistan turning blind eye to terror funding on its soil. And Nepal lawmakers get first jab of COVID-19 vaccine ahead of parliament session. And now for all the details. As the second phase of the vaccination drive is underway across India, the government has directed states to utilize all private hospitals, including those that are not impaneled under government health insurance schemes for the vaccination exercise. Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan on Wednesday said the government has removed time constraint to increase the speed of vaccination and citizens can now get vaccinated 24-7 at their convenience. India's Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan on Wednesday said that government has extended COVID-19 vaccination schedule allowing hospitals to choose any time window to vaccinate people. Taking to Twitter, Harshvardhan said people can get vaccinated 24-7 at their convenience. Indian citizens over the age of 60 years and people aged 45 and above with comorbidities are being vaccinated in the second phase. With over 5 million beneficiaries registering for COVID-19 vaccination since the second phase of the inoculation drive began on Monday, the centre directed states to utilise all private hospitals for the vaccination exercise. The centre has also said that hospitals can, in consultation with state governments, extend their vaccination sessions. On Wednesday, President Ramnath Kovind was administered the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine at an army hospital and urged all eligible citizens to get vaccinated. Meanwhile, the Central Tibetan Administration in India's northern hill town of Dharamshala has requested for vaccination for exiled Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, be carried out in his premises. Specifically, the request is uh, His Holiness, because he is in the uh, self-quarantine for last qu uh, quite some time. So, a request has been received to vaccinate him in his own premises. It is under the consideration of the government and a final decision will be taken. India reported 14,989 fresh COVID-19 cases on Wednesday, taking the tally to 11,139,516. Moving on, as Global Terror Financing Watchdog Financial Action Task Force has retained Pakistan on its grey list, a Pashtun rights activist has blamed the country continues to provide shelter to dreaded terrorists including the Taliban. He accused terror outfits have been collecting funds openly and the state is not responding against these activities. As Pakistan remains on the grey list of the FATA Financial Action Task Force, Pashtun rights activist Fazalur Rahman Afridi has blamed the country for providing shelter to dreaded terrorists, including the Taliban. Paris-based Afridi, a member of the Pashtun Tahafuz movement, said the tribal areas in Pakistan continue to remain a safe haven for terrorists and Pakistani security forces have failed to act against these outfits. The FATF last week decided to keep Pakistan on its grey list till June for failing to act on six key parameters. Yeah not only in Fata, uh, but even in the settled areas like uh, in the important cities, uh, Sawabi, uh, Martan, uh, Peshawar, Sawat, and uh, even in Quetta, uh, there seems to be Taliban activities. They are organizing huge uh, gatherings and uh, collecting funds openly, and the state uh, is not responding against uh, these activities. Afridi also highlighted the case of Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan terrorist Ehsan Ullah Ehsan, who openly threatened on Twitter a second attempt on Nobel laureate Malala Yousafzai's life. Malala was shot and badly wounded by Ehsan's group nine years ago for advocating girls' education.
the threat prompted malala to tweet herself asking both the military and pakistani prime minister imran khan to explain how her alleged shooter ehsan had escaped from government custody in news from afghanistan amid a wave of killings that is spreading fear among professional workers in afghanistan three female media workers were shot dead in the eastern afghan city of jalalabad on tuesday according to site intelligence group the islamic state claimed responsibility for the attack Three women media workers were shot dead in the eastern Afghan city of Jalalabad on Tuesday. Government officials said amid a wave of killings that is spreading fear among professional workers in urban centers. Head of local broadcaster Enikas TV Zalma Latifi said the three women were recent high school graduates aged between 18 and 20 who worked in the station's dubbing department. Reports suggest that the women were killed on their way home from work and witnesses said gunmen shot the women in head before fleeing. Provincial police chief Juma Gul Hamad said that the suspected lead attacker who he named as Kari Basir had been arrested and he was connected to the insurgent Taliban. However, a Taliban spokesman denied the group had any involvement in the attack. <laughs> او دو نفر زخمیان چې د دوی کې مهم تر ریش د دوی ډله را بری کول هماغه د خاري بسیت پرون هم د اوس کې ورته رسول دي د ورې شي سره اکورډنګ ټو سایټ انټلیجنس ګروپ دی اسلامیک سټیټ کلیم دی ریسپونسیبلټی فور دی اټاک ان ریسنٹ منتس ا ویو اف شوٹنګز اینڈ بومبنګز ہیو ٹارگیٹڈ جرنلسٹ سیول سوسائٹی ورکرز اینڈ گورنمنٹ ایمپلائیز موونگ آن ٹو نیوز فرام نیپال Nepal's parliamentarians and other senior leaders on Wednesday got vaccinated with the India manufactured COVID shield vaccine against COVID-19. The ministers are being vaccinated ahead of the parliament session scheduled for 7th of March. Lawmakers, parliament secretariat staffers and senior leaders of Nepal on Wednesday took their first jab of the India manufactured covid shield vaccine against covid-19. Health minister Hridesh Tripathi, parliament speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota, co-chair of Nepal Communist Party's Nepal Dahal faction Pushpa Kamal Dahal and Madhav Kumar Nepal were among others inoculated in the second phase of the immunization drive. The parliamentarians are being vaccinated in a bid to be prepared for the parliament session scheduled for March 7. President Vidya Devi Bhandari earlier this week summoned the first meeting of the House of Representatives on March 7 after the Supreme Court ordered to reinstate the lower house of the parliament which was dissolved late last year on Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli's recommendation. The Himalayan country launched its immunization drive in January. beginning with medical workers and plans to eventually cover 72% of the south asian country's 30 million people moving on to news from sri lanka the sri lankan roman catholic church has declared black sunday this weekend to demand justice for the victims of 2019 easter sunday bombings that killed at least 258 people Church officials said they have been given presidential commission's report into the coordinated suicide bomb attacks but many questions still remain. Archbishop of Colombo Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit on Tuesday declared that March 7 will be observed as a Black Sunday to demand justice for the victims of Easter Sunday bomb attacks. as he raised questions over the findings of a presidential commission report into the coordinated suicide bombings on April 21 2019 that killed over 250 people the roman catholic church officials said instead of concentrating on finding the people directly responsible the focus has gone in the direction of whether those in power at the time fulfilled their responsibilities or not He said the church expects the government to carry out a further investigation with vigor. Church leaders have asked congregations to attend mass on Sunday dressed in black. Special prayers will be offered for justice for the victims of the 2019 attack on three churches and three luxury hotels, claimed by local jihadist organization National Tawhid Jamaat and the Islamic State. A power struggle between the then Prime Minister Maitri Pala Sirisena and Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe which led to a communications breakdown 
and the resulting lapse in security coordination is said to have enabled the attacks, which occurred despite prior foreign intelligence warnings. In news from Bangladesh, with a view to popularize different traditional handmade winter cakes pita, a festival is now underway in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka. Scores of seasonal pita makers are bustling with hundreds of customers at the festival. The 10-day National Pita Festival began on February 23 and will continue till 4th of March. According to the organizers, this year's event has been moved from January to February due to safety concerns amid ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. This year's festival features 50 stalls offering over 100 different types of traditional pitas. Every day, the festival also features folk songs, poetry recitation and dance performances. A few second clip which went viral last month in Pakistan and neighboring India has made 19-year-old Dinanir Mobin famous in both the countries. Mobin, while expressing gratitude, has said her story is a clear example of the power of social media and that she is honored for all the love she is getting from across her homeland Pakistan and from across the border. A five-second viral clip has made an Instagram influencer from Pakistan famous across her country and neighboring India. 19-year-old Danani Mobin in her video featured her girl gang outside a roadside diner in front of their car. Mobin in the video clip looks straight into the camera and says, This is our car, this is us and we are partying. The party slang for party clip and its subsequent hashtag party ho rahi hai has inspired millions of imitations, parodies and music across social media. Celebrities such as Indian actor Ranveer Singh have also posted their own versions of the video. I feel extremely grateful. I've been seeing tweets where people are going like, you know, this you did something that no one else could and I was just reading it and I could feel the power the tweet had. And I think it's just amazing because people are sharing a friendly dialogue across the border. There's so much love being shared, um, a lot of appreciation pouring in across the border. It's, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm honored and I'm grateful for all the love across the border. Since acquiring her newfound celebrity status, Mobin said she has been offered acting and modeling jobs, but she intends to pursue a career in Pakistan's foreign service. She is currently applying to universities to pursue her undergraduate degree. A horse show featuring domestic breeds drew scores of enthusiasts, especially children in India's southern Coimbatore city earlier this week. Organizers said they hope to take the indigenous breeds into equestrian sports as a next step. Indigenous Horses Society of India organized a horse show specifically meant for domestic breeds in southern Coimbatore city earlier this week. More than 60 horses participated in the show, which was a hit among the children, who got to ride on them, jump hurdles and witness a number of stunts. Vice President of Indigenous Horses Society of India, Raghavendra Singh said they were hoping to take these indigenous breeds into sports with civilians as a next step. This show, of course, is for the breeds. It is the Items here, the events here are mainly to do with stallion, fillies, colts of the breed, that is of the confirmation of the horse, how well are you breeding this horse, which is quite an important factor. But our next step uh, is to go into sports. The horses of Indian military and paramilitary already participate in equestrian sports, but large civilian population of India largely remains eluded. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsLine.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsLine and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsLine. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.